She's not a stock bro. Stop treating her like an investment. And this mindset just reinforces itself over and over of, well, you're already this far. Well, you already spent this much amount of money. Might as well not quit now. Stop looking at women as a flat base investment and look at it as an opportunity to invest. So stop treating her like an investment. So for some reason, I felt like it's been a pretty long week. I think it's pretty much just <laughs> the UK being absolutely roasting right now. And even as I record this at... 12.57 a.m. on a Saturday morning, I guess. It's still absolutely roasting. And I made quite like a heavily researched video yesterday. So I thought today instead, maybe try have a bit more fun. I guess there is like a serious issue in this video, but there is a lot of just like ridiculous statements from people involved. I don't even know what the name is. Like I've seen people like left this video essayist calling it the manosphere, and I guess it's pretty much men trying to give terrible advice to other men about how to get women. But as we're gonna see in this video, and as you know, internet history has proved, a lot of the people giving this advice aren't really in it because they genuinely wanna help men find, I don't know, female partners and stuff. It's because they wanna sell dodgy books and online courses. It seems pretty popular right now to grift to the crowd who are really into people like Jordan Peterson or Andrew Tate and these people who promote pretty toxic masculinity and really just give absolutely terrible advice and it shows how they see women. It's a very bigoted view of women and what actually struck me reading a lot about this and like reading tweets and watching like these TikToks and stuff is that they talk about women the same way they often talk about like Bitcoin and stocks and it's not surprising a lot of these things are all in the same environment. Remember Jordan Peterson was speaking at a Bitcoin conference. All of these people are normally shilling cryptocurrency. And the way they view women is kind of like the same thing. It's like a stock. It's like something you have to invest in. And women and men have like an inherent value based on absolutely stupid metrics. Mainly like what car do you drive and what designer clothes do you wear? So I guess the correct term is like pickup artist. So I guess that will probably be in the title somewhere. But all of that coming up for you today, but please like the video and maybe in the comments, tell me who is the worst pickup artist. We are gonna talk about a few of them today. Also, please check me out on social media at The Cavernacle on Twitter, on Instagram. Check out the subreddit down in the description. Consider becoming a patron. I wanna build up as many $1 to $3 patrons as possible and the benefits of that are getting access to the Discord server and my Nintendo Switch friend code. Also check out my second channel too, The Cavernacle Extra. So before we start talking this rabbit hole, I found myself going down on Twitter about these like pickup artists, Twitter accounts that just write the most insane stuff and then promote some sort of book in their bio. I want you guys to cast your mind back, I think to 2020. So basically what I've been doing recently while editing videos and stuff, I've been watching Curtis Connor, Cruel World Happy Mind and Mooncat videos about this guy called Russell Hartley. I think I've actually watched videos on him before, like when it happened, but I've just been watching them again. And remember it was that guy who would always be wearing those suits, making these TikToks, where he would just say the most like absolutely insane stories, which was so obviously fake. Rules for picking up girls in clubs. Rule number one. First things first, if you even wanna play the game, you gotta get into the club. And I've only ever waited in line one time in my life when I first got to LA and never again. And most of the time he was talking about his conquests with women and he'd always include like ethnic stereotypes and racial stereotypes. And he'd always talk about, you know, how you could find yourself in the same situation as him and how he only like talks to models and stuff like that. So loads of people started making videos on him and how his videos were bigoted and how his advice was garbage and I think he actually tried to take legal action against the person who runs Cruel World Happy Minds channel because she showed his online courses about picking up women. And I think he's one of the most notorious examples. And in Mooncat's video, she actually watched like an hour and a half live stream that he advertises where he gives advice on how to pick up women. Even if you lift your cursor up off the page towards other tabs while that video is playing, it gives you a huge pop-up box prompting you to stay till the end of the seminar to get this amazing wingman pamphlet. Wow, what an offer. A PDF pamphlet for sitting and watching this for 90 minutes. Hey guys, I'm Johnny Trula, the host of Rules of Engagement Live. And this is 
Russell Hartley. I'm the producer of the show Rules of Engagement Live, and today we're going to be doing the Rules of Engagement webinar, right? Right, right. It's a free, it's a free service. We're going to be showing you guys how to attract beautiful women online and with uh, expert advice cultivated from the world's leading experts on dating, dating. pickup, relationships, right. all of these things. So the underlying thing I took away from these videos is this guy purposely became very controversial and kind of like pandered to this audience of people so they would eventually buy his products and take his course and watch his live stream and stuff like that. And it felt to me that maybe it was a bit more deliberate than it seemed in that all these lies he were telling was just to get infamy. And sometimes when you do get things like infamy, you do get real followers as well. So I think maybe he was hoping to convert that into actual profit through desperate people buying his ridiculous courses. And just like most people, this guy had loads of fake testimony about how much he had helped everyone out. So I'd recommend the videos made by Curtis Connor, Cruel World Happy Mind, and Mooncat as well. Hopefully I've linked them all in the description. If you know it isn't 7 a.m. and I kind of forgot because I probably stayed up all night making this video. And I feel like a lot of these figures, not just in like the pickup artist realm, but just generally, are preying on young men and diverting their anger and insecurities basically at women and feminism and blaming that for their inability to pick up women naturally or get dates or have successful relationships. And of course that often leads into these people becoming more radicalized into ultra right-wing ideologies where they do hate women. And it's just like a general symptom of a toxic masculine society where we view gender roles in a really, really rigid way. And often the advice these accounts give is really appealing to these very stereotypical views of gender that a man has to be a provider, strong, successful, dresses like amazingly in Armani suits and stuff like that. And I think these guys always massively overcomplicate it, but they project this image that they are successful with women themselves. And if you learn from them, you can become successful with women too. And also something I noticed while watching this, like what does success with women mean? Does success mean getting into like a healthy and stable relationship? for multiple years, maybe leading to marriage or a family. That doesn't seem like the success they're promoting. They're never really giving advice on how you maintain relationships or how you get into healthy relationships. It's pretty much all about sexual conquest and how many women you can sleep with or get their phone numbers. Again, is really trying to appeal to people who just view women as sex objects. So now let's go into this rabbit hole I fell down. So I was watching Curtis Connor's video about this sort of stuff and I found the account he was referencing. I found some weird like toxic masculinity Voight Kampf test type tweets and you guys are gonna get what I mean. If you don't understand what a Voight Kampf test is, basically in Blade Runner, the main character Deckard has this test which can tell if you are a replicant or a human, if you've played the video game that was recently remastered and was released on like the Switch and the PS4 and stuff like that, you actually get to use the Voight-Kampf test yourself. It's actually really fun. Reaction time is a factor in this, so please pay attention. Where do you live? Third sector, uptown. Nice neighborhood? Very. You notice someone attractive across the room. If I thought the attraction was mutual, I would ask her out for coffee or lunch. You're having dinner at a friend's home. Halfway through the appetizer, he tells you that you've been eating goose liver pate. I wouldn't eat it, and I confront him. A man dressed in rags approaches you on the street and asks for money. I try to help him, of course. Buy him dinner or take him to a shelter. And while I'm reading this, do you think these questions would be out of place in Blade Runner on a Voight Kampf test. So I wanna start with these tweets before delving into the massive grift behind these accounts who promote this really bad advice on how to pick up women. So this account has changed its name, but basically its main name is at PUA Dating Tips, how to be a Chad and win at life. And then in its bio, it says, after 4,000 approaches, I share my step-by-step -step set collation system to get laid fast. Amazon best-selling author of eight books at Speak Woman Ease. 107,000 followers. Honestly, I don't know how many of these followers are probably botted. It does kind of seem like a lot of these accounts have massively inflated numbers of followers. But let's get into the bizarre Voight Kampf test style um, tweets it's putting out. I guess to go viral or to get attention. So first one. 
You're walking into an apartment complex to visit a friend, and you see this woman checking her phone. You feel a sexual desire towards her. How do you open? And there actually are like legit responses to this, so here's one. I wouldn't say anything, simply tip my hat as I walk by and I make brief eye contact. As I get to the top of the stairs, I turn around. She undoubtedly hasn't stopped looking at me and give her a follow me finger wag. Confidence and mystery will work every time. I mean, you guys would probably immediately think that's satire, but I'm sad to tell you there's actually a lot of these stupid replies under these tweets. Is the hat this guy is wearing a fedora by any chance? You're at your friend's house party and decide to chill in the backyard. You're about to take a seat, but you notice this attractive young woman. How do you open? And then someone's actually replied, Hey, when you're done posing for the cameras, come sit with me. Your back must be killing you. I'm sure that woman would be right over to sit next to you, RJ. And basically what you're going to see through me reading these tweets, basically what these accounts do is constantly promote each other because they're all owned by the same person. So this account owns another account called The Seduction Devil and they reply under their other account's tweet, This one's easy. Use an observational opener. Crazy party. Did you see the guy with the banana costume there? Say something about the pie. Absolutely amazing advice. If you follow the seduction devil's advice, I'm sure you'll be picking up women in no time. You're on your way to attend your friend's college graduation event, but on the way there, you notice this young woman relaxing by a tree. How do you open? It's a hot summer day. You're at the beach, chilling with some friends. As you head down towards the shore, you notice this young woman showering off some sand from her body. You have some downtime. How do you open? You're at a friend's birthday event and notice this strange young woman staring into the distance and lost in thought. She's been sitting alone for several minutes, seemingly pondering her existence. She's cute. How do you open? You're on vacation with your relatives at a ski resort, escaping for a few days from the chaotic city life that you're used to. As you head up the snowy mountain, you spot this cute girl. Your eyes meet hers and you crack a smile. How do you open? I mean, as funny as I find those tweets, it's clear what they're doing and it is all about sex. It is all about sexualizing women, seeing them as sexual objects, and the only reason you are talking to them is to sleep with them. And that is the main theme you see with most pickup artists. It's not trying to promote healthy traits in you, actually develop a sustainable relationship with someone. It's basically like, what is the quickest way to get someone to sleep with me? If you thought those tweets were insane, Take a look at some more of these, and it's really playing into like the Russell Hartley playbook. Just say stuff like this to get attention for yourself. Maybe lure in a couple of gullible, desperate people, and then sell them your garbage product. So let's have a look at the tweets, and then start looking at some of the stuff they sell. So, Hollywood movies create this untrue expectation that a shy, nervous, nice guy will eventually get the girl because she will see past the weak exterior and fall in love with his heart of gold. Get into the habit of taking action every single day. This is what will move you forward in life and generate results. For the record, reading theory is not action. Gaining knowledge is not action. Action is in the doing. Take behaviors designed to produce end goals. Like, what does this tweet like even mean? Rejecting can hurt like being punched in the face, but you want to know what hurts more? Being a pussy. I would rather be punched in the face all day long than be a pussy. And every time you get punched, you develop greater psychological immunity. I have to believe no one seriously thinks this and it's designed to be purposefully inflammatory because who would rather be punched in the face than be rejected by a woman, as someone who has been absolutely smashed in the face by some guy off his face who sucker punched me, let me tell you, I do not want that to happen on a regular basis. And I don't think you're developing any greater psychological immunity because you're probably just getting brain damage. So here's some more proof these guys pretty much just view dating women as some sort of financial interaction. So she doesn't give an F about your sob story, excuses, troubled past, all the reasons why you just couldn't make it, that you lacked a strong male role model, just cares about, do I feel good around him? Did he make it in life now? Do I get value? So again, obviously, if you're in a healthy relationship, your partner will care about your troubled past. They will care about the reasons maybe you couldn't make it in whatever field or maybe sports. And they will care about you personally. They won't only care about, do I feel good around him? Do I get value? What does that even mean? Do I get value? So guys, have you ever wondered why women don't find you interesting? I think this account has the answer. Some guys have no passions or hobbies other than Netflix binge watching, nor do they go traveling on exciting adventures or attend cool events. Then they're left wondering why they come across as boring to women. Simple advice, 
do interesting shit. Yeah, everyone, just do interesting shit. Don't live a life that will make you feel happy and hopefully get into a relationship with someone who will share similar interests with you. Go on exciting adventures and attend cool events just so you can be appealing to women, but probably hating your life because the reason you don't do that in the first place is because you don't actually want to. So a fair bit of women blaming goes on in these tweets as well. Here's another one. Women are ruthless in the sexual marketplace. Meet ruthlessness with ruthlessness. F her opinion and validation. Be willing to be savagely, coldly pragmatic. Always retain walkaway power. Have other women spinning in your rotation. Seize control and social power. Again, this mindset they're promoting is just so insanely toxic. Being in a relationship with someone shouldn't be some sort of like mental warfare against that person and playing mind games with them. Of course, I know that does go on, but I don't think anyone should be promoting that as a way to be successful with the ladies. Like, what does walk away power even mean? Can't you just like leave a relationship anytime you want? So I think I've read enough of those tweets for you to get the vibe. So they also have this other account linked in their bio called Speak Womanese 101, Learn Women's Secret Language. Women speak womanese, a cryptic language where she says one thing and means something else. <laughs> speak it back to them for pleasure and profit. So if I click on the link, it has read my books, change your life. So Corey Smith, the author of at PUA Dating Tips. Now, before you guys ask, I did look around to see if I could find someone called Corey Smith who allegedly wrote these books. I have a strong suspicion it actually is a fake name. But again, if you guys have heard of Corey Smith, let me know. And Corey Smith has a quote. When you stop caring what people think because you realize that in a year it won't even matter, then people will lose the power that they hold over you. You will be able to free your authentic self and do whatever the f you want. So seduction resources, and here are all his books that you can buy, and also self-development resources. So if I click on the first one, Conversation Casanova Mastery, uh, 48 conversation tactics, techniques, and mindsets to start conversations, flirt like a master, and never run out of things to say, the book. 35 five-star ratings, amazing, must be a good read. So this all sounds like very well and good, this book. But like I said, the person who owns the main account I showed you owns multiple accounts like this. They also own this account, and it's not very clear on the surface, the man maker, Follow me to learn how the female brain works, what motivates them, why do they do what they do, discipline, dating, and mind games, link in their Instagram, which we will check out a bit later. And in their pinned comment, they have this tweet. Safe, predictable, and nice conversations with women get you into the friend zone. Learn how to neg, flirt, tease, disqualify, emo spike, I've never heard of that, and turn conversations sexual, here in the book, Conversation Casanova Mastery. Click the link to get it now. So again, link in the exact same book that I just showed you. And then if you go through the page a bit more, you find more outlines of the products you can buy. So the vault, the ultimate bundle of resources for seducers. And this is also by at PUA Dating TIPS, $120, only seven five-star ratings on this one. Mustn't be as good as the last one. So this bundle includes all the products that I have written. Look at all those exclamation points right there. Audiobook masterpieces, over 50 hours of life-changing narrated content with books included. But just to show you this ecosystem and how this one person, Corey Smith, the elusive Corey Smith, has this whole grift going. So the seduction devil who replied to one of his Voigtkampf test tweets earlier, also has his own book. So here's another one by the Seduction Devil who has nothing to do with Corey Smith and the other book. So $10 Seduction and Social Skills Masterclass. All places left apparently. So over 1,123 plus action taking men already went through this program and in just one week found themselves skipping the line at bars and clubs, high-fiving the bouncers and befriending the staff, friends shocked, staring at them in disbelief. <laughs> if this course can make me skip the line at bars and high-five all the bouncers, I'm definitely in. Entering a cafe with their girl, receiving a warm welcome and discovering that they're regular, has already been prepared. <laughs> Walking into any social setting for the first time and leaving happier smarter and richer having made meaningful connections i mean i hopefully that means richer in i guess personal fulfillment rather than i don't know robbing the place but um beautiful women dropping every excuse to be around them shooting dms even when she's got nothing to say 
finding time for them when she's busy for everyone else. And today you can join these men and steal all their secrets for only $10. Only $10, the high five, all the bouncers in every club in London. You'll get the same results in the same time frame, seven days. So basically with all these courses you will ever see, they have fake testimony about how great it is. Obviously they could do this with a fake account or just pay people to make it up. I'm leaning towards the fake account. So let's hear from men inside the masterclass in their own words. So do you guys wanna hear this testimony? I definitely do. Hi to brother. There was this lady I was really hitting on and she acted difficult. Your teaching of starving attention worked for I kept off texts and calls for four days. The fifth day she texted me and said if I want to smash her that bad that I went mute then I should pick her up. I told her if only she can come over to my place. I pinned her location and in one hour she was ringing my doorbell. Now she's hooked to my screws adding that I work out my biceps and abs are her play field. This kind of comes across as if it was written by some sort of AI. Listen. I just finished everything in the course and I will start implementing everything. But I have, genuinely have, to say for $10 is unreal. I also bought course from, I don't know if you two know each other, but your ebook I think is even better. This you can sell for $100, like her no problem. You maybe want to stay private, but I still have to ask, what's your Instagram? I want to follow your live mate. So obviously terrible English could mean a couple things. Maybe this person doesn't speak English as a first language, and then I might be quite impressed with their English. It's written by an AI, or the guy wrote it to himself, and just being the lazy ass he is, didn't actually check any spelling or grammar. So this guide is so good, even his own customers have said they'd pay $100 for it. So Seduction Devil, why only $10? Listen, I don't even want your $10. As most of you already know, this product used to be free. Price is now to filter out time wasters and keep the quality high. First 100 copies went for $0, current 100 are going for $10, and the next 100 will go for $100. The course material is often being revised. Of course, everyone inside gets them for free forever. Use your $10 now, you'll spend more at lunch today, and by the end of this week, watch all your friends' jaws drop to the floor when they see multiple attractive women flocked around you at all times <laughs> and high-value men inviting you to their clubs, parties, and events. Or buy it for $100 once for limited copies run out, or don't, your choice, really. Oh my God, the image I'm thinking of while reading this, like multiple attractive women flocked around you at all times. Like you're just trying to like walk down to the shops and then there are several attractive women just swarming you. You're like, no ladies, sorry, not today. <laughs> With all your friends just watching over their jaws drop to the floor. So that was absolutely hilarious. And obviously, even if the advice he gave was even passable, nothing that he describes would ever happen because that is just not the real world. That's a video game. There's nothing a book could tell you which would literally turn women into robots. And I think the most unrealistic part of these promises is that every single bouncer would start high-fiving you as you walk into the club. I don't think there's anything that would make a bouncer high-five you. But if we go onto the Seduction Devil's Instagram, that and the Man Makers one, they're laid out very similar, obviously proving my point. And Bespeak Womanese Today one, which is owned by the same person, is also laid out the same. And there's another one called Charles Miller laid out the exact same. So in my opinion, these are all run by the exact same person and the exact same account. And it's just so bizarre they think people will take this seriously. So on the Man Makers account, he has testimony from people as well. And it has stuff like this. Hi man, I don't know who you are. I don't know whether you read this message or not, but I want to tell you one thing that your each and every quotes are really good, man. I really like to appreciate it. <laughs> it really changes the view I see. Good work, man. Keep going. My support is always with you. Let Lord Jesus bless you in abundance. Good luck to your future. So I really like to appreciate it's a very, very bizarre way of talking about liking someone's Instagram posts. So obviously there isn't actually much deep about these quotes. It's just funny to see the very exaggerated testimony, but I did notice something on his account and you can DM for promotions and there is one TikTok slash Instagram reel that plays on this account recently. It's by an account called EB3 Posts. So when I saw it on the Man Makers page, I initially thought this guy, EB3, must own all these pages. By the end of this video, you guys can tell me, do you think EB3 Posts owns all these pages or did he just pay to get his reel promoted on the man maker. So if you go onto EB3 posts, you can see it says reject modernity, embrace masculinity, curate your life. 
instill discipline and be unapologetically ambitious. Now, this guy has loads of TikToks about how to be, I don't know, a better man. And initially while watching them on Instagram, I thought they were really stupid and had elements of this like toxic masculinity ideology. Um, but I found them relatively harmless as stuff like this goes. And then I had a look at his TikTok. First, we should just get into who this guy is. This is like a massive rabbit hole. This might be just like the most irrelevant person ever, but I think it's a good insight into how these grifters are trying to get started. So like I said, this guy has a very, very small Instagram and TikTok presence, but he has a website and he says, hello, I'm Eric Borowski, or better known on social media as EB3. I am a tech entrepreneur who has hit his big break in niche gaming sector. I have been developing marketing and managing niche and indie video games for the better part of 10 years, five years successfully and as a living. So he started something called Ambition Academy. So Ambition Academy is a legion of like-minded men striving towards a similar goal, absolute best experience we can. Life as a man is limitless. Your potential is completely in your own hands. What will you do? I do not believe masculinity is defined so much by what you do, but how you do it. That goes for anything in life. Ambition Academy aims to not only help you in the financial sector of your life, but in your fitness, fashion, confidence, and lifestyle. And if I want to join this academy, it is $30 a month, exclusive Discord access and information, join Q&A sessions and private calls, and discuss topics with like-minded men. I want to quickly have a look at some of his uh, Instagram reels before going on to his TikTok. She's not a stock, bro. Stop treating her like an investment. And this mindset just reinforces itself over and over of, well, you're already this far. Well, you already spent this much amount of money. Might as well not quit now. It's like watching your stock just fucking plump, plump, plump. Well, I've already lost this much money. Might as well not pull out now. That's the mindset you get in. So you need to stop looking at women as a flat base investment and look at it as an opportunity to invest. Have this person prove to you that they are someone worthy of investing investing in long term and seriously if this person th guys look I'm not saying that you're gonna find a woman with no problems you're never gonna find that you're always going to have problems with something they do or something they've done or something they're going to do or whatever but what you can do is minimize the areas that you two just do not get along right you two just don't mesh on very important topics or certain ways you're going to parent children or, or certain wants in life maybe she doesn't want to have kids and you do these are things that are very hard to deal with and very hard to change. Confidence is one of the most important things when you're going to be dealing with women because they can see right through fake confidence. So if you know, you're know you a guy who doesn't have his life together and you're walking around like you do, it does not take women long to decompile that. It's actually a shocking skill that they have. Like it's pretty incredible how fast they can be like, you know what, this dude really isn't about what he's saying he's about. And trust me, they will decompile you. They'll start asking you certain questions. They'll start saying certain things to you, see how you respond to certain things. They'll test you and you're gonna fail because you're really not that guy you're trying to be. You need to be the man before you go and try to act like you are to these chicks. If you don't have your life in order in the areas that I just talked about, first fitness, second finances, where are you at financially? Third thing is your fashion. You really have no business trying to get a girl because you're not just competing with the local farm boys anymore. You're not just competing with your city or your subdivision or your school. We're, we're now competing on a global marketplace. These are kind of some of the less bad reels I found in this account, but I do find it funny how he says, don't treat her like a stock bro, before proceeding to talking about investing in her and then talking about like men's value and stuff. I feel like this whole like toxic masculinity dating advice grift treats everything like it is crypto investing on something. And just like cryptocurrency, it seems like it's all a massive scam for these people to try and make you money because they speak with confidence as, you know, wannabe pickup artists like Russell Hartley and this guy to try and lure you in to buy their courses, to make them money, when in reality, they don't really have much insight. They don't have good advice because if you show this to most women, they will laugh at you and say, why are you listening to garbage advice like this? But then it took a bit more of a sinister turn when I went on this guy's TikTok where he starts featuring really, really terrible social media influencers. Yeah, it's a know each other. It could be $10. Exactly. So he, so he benefit, but he doesn't. doesn't. You cannot have the whole world. And if you think you're going to get a high value guy who's just going to deal with this double standard all the time, he's not. This is a reality that you have to accept as men. Your excuses don't matter. Okay, nobody cares that you're not ripped because your leg was broken for six months. Nobody cares that you weren't performing at work because you were going through a breakup. Nobody cares about your excuses. All they care about is what you can produce. They care about your results. If you're a man who 
you're underperforming and you have a million excuses, you might get sympathy for three seconds and then everybody moves on from you. As a man, you cannot afford the luxury of excuses. You can't afford to say, I don't feel like it today. You can't afford to say, I didn't want to do it today. You can't afford to not get up today. You have to go out there and make yourself great. Nobody is going to do it for you. And at the end of the day, nobody's going to care what your excuse is as to why you're not great. You need to get out there and you need to make it happen. Good luck. So showing clips of the Fresh and Fit podcast and Andrew Tate and then agreeing with them, but then not agreeing with them so much that you seem like a massive dick, but agreeing with them enough that people will recognize what these people are saying and you can pull them in from this manosphere. And it's clear someone like this, regardless of who he is, even if he's just a wannabe pickup artist, he's just doing all these things to try and make you sign up for his course to make that sweet 30 bucks a month. I don't even know if this guy believes what he's saying because it's such garbage advice. As you can see through all of these things I've shown you, it's never gonna help you. And also the way he just describes like dating, like valuable men, all this stuff, it's so ridiculous and it's so generic as well. Like what is the concept of like a valuable man or like what you bring to the table and all this stuff. And just talk about like my own relationship for a while. So I've been going out with the same person for like nine and a half plus years. Started going out when we were 17, I'm 26 now. And I can tell you the most important thing, especially when you're older, isn't about what you bring to the table and value. We don't judge each other based on like monetary value, fitness, like conventional achievements. We're happy for each other when we do have success, but we're together because we've always got on really well. We're really, really compatible. And of course we really liked each other when we started becoming friends at like 17 and stuff. And although there are like important like adult aspects and I won't pretend certain priorities don't change as you get older. I think sometimes even thinking about it through like a teenager's eyes of like, why would you go out with someone in the first place? Because you like them, right? Obviously attractiveness is part of that, but you don't think of all the other stuff. You don't think of the financial stuff. You don't think of like how much value they have. You just like them because you get on. And I'm not saying, especially as an adult, that is enough, but I think that's a very, very good starting place. And of course there are different problems you'll run into as adults and there will be stuff to do with like financial things and of course taking care of your health mainly so you can live a longer life with your partner but putting those things to the forefront above actually getting on with a person I think is absolutely laughable because like I said even if these people genuinely feel like they want to help people they're not helping anyone create a sustainable relationship because everything they prioritize is aesthetic, is surface level, is all about you know monetary things and basically things that don't matter. And if you strip a lot of those things away, you and that potential person won't even like each other. You just may be attracted to each other based on sexual characteristics. But I think this focus on this Tinder world also makes men focus on the wrong things, right? Because in the long term, women will appreciate you for having good personal qualities, characteristics, and having a healthy relationship and treating them fairly and treating them like a fellow human being and not an object. So people focus on the hustle, making money, getting a ripped body, getting big muscles, getting the stupid peaky blinders haircut and everything like that, but they don't focus on actually fixing problems within themselves or fixing problems which led to their old relationships ending too soon because they might have quality which mean they can't sustain a long-term relationship, which they probably need to go to therapy for to work through. But I had some fun with this one because of how insane the promises were for some of these courses. But if you made it this far, thank you for watching.